Well, eyes are amazed about whether grandmothers have any function in the family. It's about a young academic who's doing an MA and she's investigating whether it's right or not to think that grandmothers do have some sort of position in the family and that that position is important. And she goes through a series of grandmothers, but this is interspersed with her own relationship with her two grandmothers, Isa and May, who are quite different, different class, different type. They want different things from her. And the deeper she gets into her research, as she sort of goes from doing people like Elizabeth Fry, what sort of grandmothering did she do and what can it tell you about the function of grandmother and she moves on to people like Queen Victoria and uh, Vanessa Bell and other grandmothers so this is interspersed with her sessions with her tutor who is constantly pulling her up and pointing out to her that you know this is all very vague and the girl herself can't decide whether it's true or not so that's that's the basis of the book. The, the research as you said, Julia Margaret Cameron, Queen Victoria, mm. George Sands, all people not noted for being grandmothers, was fabulously interesting. You've been very well celebrated for your biography of Daphne du Maurier. Part of me thought, is this your way also of getting that glorious research into print about what you found out? I had originally thought of um, doing this book as a straightforward research into grandmothers, a non-fiction book, you know, a biographical book. But then I decided that it, there was no fun in that, not as much fun. There was not enough fun in it to be able to make it as readable as I would like it to be. And that's often the case, that you turn to fiction to free yourself to be a little bit inventive, you know, so that you've got the all the research that Ismay does is correct. But then out of that research, fiction allows you to go ways that the strict rules of biography wouldn't allow you to go. But a lot of the book, though, is Issa May wanting to research what happened to her own grandparents mm. and taking a sort of view about their lives. I don't want to give too much away because it'll, it'll spoil it for mm. anybody uh, reading the book. But do you think grandchildren have a right to examine ancestors' lives in that way? I think they have a right, yes, but I think the grandparents, if they're still living, have a right to keep things secret. And that really is what is at the heart of the book, as I see it. You know, in our time now, uh, secrecy is not something that is very common. It used to be. In the generation before me, and even in my generation, there were always secrets in families. There were always things that you grew up and suddenly found out and thought, good God, you know so-and-so was illegitimate, which would be meaningless today because illegitimacy doesn't exist really in that kind of way. Or you would find out, you know, that someone had been in prison or... So all these things that might perhaps be shameful are suddenly out in the open. But Isame, when she's writing, when she's doing her research, suddenly becomes aware that there is probably a big secret in her family and it's of importance to her research because it's to do with genetics. And then I became interested in really how important are genetics. Grandparents on the whole, grandmothers tend to think that they can see the genetic links in children and grandchildren. And that's one of the great games that all grandmothers play, sometimes ridiculously. I mean, you know, they'll look at a newborn baby and say, oh, that's our Harry or whatever. <laughs> and it's absurd because you can't really see this at all. But as children grow, you, do, you can't help seeing the DNA implant that is on them. And after all, we know now that everybody does have this programming, that it is all there, that it can be proved, the connection. What I found interesting uh, reading the book was, as Issa May was trying to research her grandmother's life, that looking at my own family, you think, yes, OK, my grandparents did this, my grandparents did that, but I had the advantage of the whole life. The, the whole perspective, the finished story. Mm. And I, I thought, is this an arrogance that I might have to judge my deceased grandparents? Uh, and I wondered whether, yes, it, perhaps it was a, a certain arrogance. Well, I find actually thinking about deceased grandparents, it can be very upsetting and distressing. I mean, for example, my own maternal grandmother, 
had this great secret in her life, she, which I discovered when I did a book called, a memoir called Hidden Lives. All it amounted to was that she'd had an illegitimate baby and that she had denied the presence of this girl. And I tried to find out what had happened to her. And actually, since I wrote that book, which is now quite a long time ago, the census returns have come for 1901 and 1911. And I now find that this illegitimate baby was actually her, her own husband's baby. You know, so this kind of secret, then it completely upsets me to think, why did my grandmother not take into her family the child that was her husband's anyway? Why was this child from the beginning fostered out? You know, it, it, and it gets weirder and weirder, the whole thing. What is also quite striking in the book is, is the thought that comes to you as a reader, that once I'm gone, what will the generations after me and my family, how they try and judge my life. They will look at the whole picture. Obviously, your grandchildren will be able to look back and have famous grand, not just grandmother, but grandparents as writers, very well known um, in British society for your writing. Does it ever cross your mind about what, how they will look at your lives? No, I never think about what will happen after I'm dead. <laughs> I have remarkably little interest in, in it. I mean, on the whole, writers, there's not a lot to discover, generally, because they've usually spilled a great deal of their lives out onto the pages of books. You're very well known from writing fiction about the family, usually from women's perspective. Is this um, idea of wanting to look back over ancestors' lives, grandparents' lives, is it particularly a feminine issue? I find women on the whole, yes, more interested than, once they've had children themselves, especially, are much more interested than men. I mean, men are, and also it's to do with family detail, isn't it? Men, as a huge generalisation, are more interested in the wider world and what is, that's why women's fiction has always been criticised from sort of Jane Austen onwards, because it's to do with tiny details in very small sort of um, watercolour paintings, whereas men are much more the grand sweep, you know, of history and of geography. Uh, and at first it can make a woman writer feel a little bit almost humble and embarrassed. Oh dear, I'm only writing about domesticity and about personal relationships. This is awful. I'll have to try and write about Afghanistan and about Iraq and about sort of all the things that really matter and 9-11. Then you catch yourself and think, oh, don't be ridiculous. You know, you're interested in human relationships. Other women are. There's no shame in writing about this. And where would we be if Jane Austen had thought that? <laughs> well, quite, yes. <laughs> Margaret Forster, thank you very much. Thank you.